I was just listening to uh, Dale back there a little bit, and, and there wasn't anything in what he said, maybe the beer part, but there wasn't, <laughs> there wasn't anything in what he said that wasn't representative, in fact, of a part of the problem that I want to talk about, which is that we have allowed our higher education institutions to evolve into basically social status givers. The enterprise is now designed principally around the concept of granting social status. And if social status is what one thinks they need to have to be able to be a learner, well, you're wrong about that. And if you think that social status is what you need to have to be successful, well, you're definitely wrong about that. And so uh, while we could argue some of the points, it's basically the overall point that we're living in a world where the universities are not up to the assignment. Uh, let's talk a little bit about that. Universities are operating today in an environment where the world, let's just take and narrow it down to the United States, let's just round our population down a little bit to 300 million people. The 300 million people in the United States live in three basic groupings. 100 million who are the most financially uh, blessed uh, with unbelievable improvement in income, improvement in educational attainment, improvement in everything, healthcare outcomes or what have you, dramatic improvements. In the middle, 100 million, you have incomes that are flat, healthcare attainment flat, educational attainment's actually down. Unemployment is, is dramatic, stresses are dramatic, and then you have a third 100 million that are, all indicators are stressful. Health outcomes going down, educational incomes going down, actual wages going down for 100 million people. Now what is that the result of? It's the result, in my view, of fantastic technological success and technological change that has improved productivity to the point now where in spite of the fact that last year was an unbelievable economic mess in terms of jobs and employment and families moving forward and home ownership and all these other things, in spite of all of that, 2011 was, the, was America's most productive year. Work units in for units of services and goods out. Most productive ever. And that most productive year produces that trifurcation of our society. So what that tells me when I look at it is that universities and other institutions have been wildly successful at technological advance and economic advance and a lot less success successful at social change and social advance and concepts of social equity and concepts of, of, of how does everyone move forward together. And so I want to talk a little bit about the thing that holds us back, which is the structure of the universities themselves. Now imagine universities as this gearing mechanism here, a series of rigid entities, rigid bodies, rigid structures, all working somewhat related to themselves and each other, but working in different directions, producing in a machine-like fashion and this is where you get some of the criticisms of universities that I think are well justified, working in a linear fashion to produce people, to produce results, to produce change and entrepreneurship and so forth. And I would argue that within this construct, entrepreneurship, which is not related to business, entrepreneurship is related to the development of new ideas. Social entrepreneurs are advancing new ideas. Social change is driven by social entrepreneurs. Social entrepreneurs build social enterprises. Enterprises are mechanisms, tools, devices, and constructs that we use to advance social change. And we have a social system right now with these three highly separate economic and social trajectories. So obviously we have a need here, but the universities view entrepreneurship in general as a quaint concept. They don't view it as a cultural objective. What do they view as a cultural objective? They view the teaching of Western civilization as a cultural objective. Okay, there's some merit to that, so long as you don't limit it to that. They view lots of things as cultural objectives, but apparently this notion of empowering and enabling people to take ideas to advance social outcomes through entrepreneurial drivers is not something the linear construct generally can produce. So here's how the linear construct works. It works to optimize within a series of, in a sense, machine-like rigid structures, things called disciplines. A discipline is a rigid social structure that says, 
economics is better than political science is better than sociology is better than anthropology is better than communications. <laughs> Physics is better than chemistry, is better than earth science, way better than psychology. <laughs> because they're rigid social constructs. And so one of the reasons that we can't get some of the results that we're looking for is that we lack flexibility among these social constructs. We have non-integrated linear solutions that we produce. They're not fantastically revolutionary. We have limited tools and I would, article that, I would argue that we have, we have uh, the ability to produce social change that's radical or revolutionary or world changing coming out of universities right now, you'd think universities with all the brains and all the people and all the energy and all the drive of the students, everything that we've got, if they could be structured in something other than a machine-like structure, they might be able to come up with some of these radical transformations we won't, where we don't sit around wondering why it is that we're the most productive we've ever been with our economy in the tank, with large percentages of our population educated with nothing to do. So we're not producing those kinds of world-changing ideas. So let's take the linear machine that we have now as the universities. What have we produced? Sort of what's our track record? Let's see, we've got, we're producing all kinds of knowledge, but we've got a low return on investment on our expenditures in the health sciences. So that's an important area for social development. We've got two segments of our society where health outcomes are actually going down. All three segments of our society, healthcare costs are going up. So for all that we can think of in this linear machine called the universities, all we can do, everything that we perform, what we get is a low return on investment. How do I know? We spend more than all of the other work countries on the planet in science and technology related to biomedical science. We spend more than everybody else on healthcare. We spend more per person, and we're not in the top 25 in terms of health outcomes of the richest countries on the planet. That's a bad outcome. That's a bad trajectory. That's something that people really need to take a look at. And I'll just pick one other an underperforming education system. Our, our education system is underperforming. It lacks innovation. There are plenty of exceptions, don't get me wrong. But it's underperforming. We're only graduating 75% of the kids out of high school. And of those that are graduating out of high school, we can't even get all of them up to high school performance levels. So the trajectory of the product of the university, new ideas, new teachers, new know-how, new whatever, is what? It's a bad trajectory. What are we doing? How are we advancing? How are we making these things change? Well, we need to reorganize the genetic structure of the universities themselves. Think about this as organizational genetics. We need to infuse entrepreneurship, which are drivers towards change, drivers towards new ideas. We need to infuse the concept of entrepreneurship, not just in the business schools and engineering schools, but into teachers' colleges and nursing colleges and communications programs and political science departments and uh, film and theater schools and art schools and everything else. This notion of not entrepreneurship in lieu of everything else, but entrepreneurship as a core genetic re-engineering of the institution itself. We need to think about radical partnerships. It is not the case, nor should it be the case, that there's only one way to learn, one platform to learn. There should be multiple ways to learn. Solving problems, working in the field. I, I had a fantastic opportunity when I was an undergraduate, I worked as a VISTA volunteer while I was in college in a program that VISTA had called University Year for Action. So they took university students out of the classroom. We did independent study. We went all over the country and we worked as VISTA volunteers while we were college students. Single most important aspect of my undergraduate life. That's what I mean by radical partnerships, radical ways of learning. This notion of reconceptualizing the university itself right now what we think of when we think about the university is we think about universities in terms of the output they produce. And we all fall into this, how many graduates and how many engineers and how many artists and how many business scholars and how many humanities majors and how many music majors. Output, how about impact? You'd all of a sudden see a completely differentiated way of thinking about universities. Here's what these people, this knowledge product embodied in person, this knowledge product embodied in ideas, this knowledge product embodied in stuff, here's what the impact of those things are. So one of the things that we've done at ASU is we've organized 
For instance, uh, uh, most universities organize themselves around the health sciences, and they're internally focused around the conceptualization of the health sciences. We're organizing ourselves around health solutions, not measured by how many papers that we've produced, not measured by how many students we've produced. We certainly need to produce both of those, but measured by did we or didn't we help make Arizona a place with health outcomes more equitably distributed throughout our population where health care delivery was delivered more equitably and at a lower cost, yes, absolutely, across our population. So we focus on impact instead of output. And then lastly, as one of our genetic re-engineering of the institution is, why should we limit ourselves to the previous speaker's reaction to the sort of same old, same old, same old model? Well, it's because everybody keeps perpetuating the same model. How many departments of XYZ doing exactly the same thing do we need 40 miles from each other? How about fusing disciplines together? Not just disciplines, but ideas and challenges. So one of the things that we did at ASU was we created a global institute of sustainability and the world's first school of sustainability, where the outcome that we're pursuing is the building of a sustainable built environment. The process by which we're moving forward is to fuse disciplines together, fuse ideas together because I can guarantee you no group of chemists, no group of engineers, no group of economists, no group of philosophers, no group of political scientists, no group of communicators, no group of advertisers, no group of finance specialists can create the knowledge necessary or produce the people necessary to establish a sustainable path for the built environment for humanity to move forward. None. None of those groups. It cannot be done. It's too big of a problem. It's too complex. And so how do you move forward? If you want social change and you want other types of change, you move forward by reconceptualizing and redesigning the institution. That's what we're doing at ASU. That's how we're moving forward. We're welcome. We welcome new ideas all the time. So whatever you got, send them to me. Michael.crow at asu.edu. Thank you.